On September 29th, Claudine Gay addressed a crowd of students and colleagues at Harvard University for the first time as president of that institution. That moment made history not only because she became the first black person to lead the university, but because, as she noted that day, arriving at that particular point in history was a journey. In a speech called Courage to be Harvard, she reminded her audience, quote, not 400 yards from where I stand some four centuries ago, four enslaved people lived and worked in Wadsworth House as the personal property of the president of Harvard University. My story is not their story. I am a daughter of Haitian immigrants to this country, and the stories of the many trailblazers between us are linked by this institution's long history of exclusion and the long journey of resistance and resilience to overcome it. And because of the collective courage of all those who walked that impossible distance across centuries and dared to create a different future, I stand before you, end quote. Courage was her message that day, and it would take courage from Harvard's community, their resolve against all odds, as Gay put it, to press on for change. That was three months ago. And in the months since, the institution's courage was tested. The conservative activist Chris Rufo led a coalition of mostly right-wing opponents in a plan to remove Gay as Harvard's president, using allegations of plagiarism and anti-Semitism. Since Gay resigned earlier this week, the conservative coalition has been downright gleeful. Chris Rufo even tried to tweet that he scalped Harvard's president. Of course, he had to learn how to spell the word scalped first. But here on this program, let's have the courage to ask why. Why was toppling Claudine Gay so important to Chris Rufo's project? In an op-ed yesterday, Claudine Gay offered an answer, quote, this was merely a single skirmish in a broader war to unravel public faith in pillars of American society. Campaigns of this kind often start with attacks on education and expertise because these are the tools that best equip communities to see through propaganda. But such campaigns don't end there. Trusted institutions of all types, from public health agencies to news organizations, will continue to fall victim to coordinated attempts to undermine their legitimacy and ruin their leaders' credibility, end quote. And according to Rufo, she's right. This campaign against Claudine Gay was about toppling institutions and reshaping them in a conservative mold. He said so himself in his own Wall Street Journal op-ed this week titled, How We Squeezed Harvard to Push Claudine Gay Out. Quote, if America is to reform its academic institutions, the symbolic fight over Harvard's presidency must evolve into a deeper institutional fight, a grueling form of trench warfare in which each concept, structure, and institution must be challenged to change the culture. He continues, if there's any hope of stopping America's cultural revolution... It must begin with a clear-eyed understanding of how to wield power and reshape institutions in the real world, end quote. In an interview with Politico, he called it really a textbook example of successful conservative activism. Conservative activism to topple the institutions responsible for maintaining our democracy and making it more inclusive. Educational institutions that helm information and analysis. Journalistic institutions that separate truth from misinformation. Even public health institutions that help keep us alive.